I haven't been talking to you, sorry. I've been busy painting and I just wanted some quiet time on my own to paint. So sometimes that's really nice, especially when you create videos and things like that. And sometimes I like to create a little bit of a gap between those videos and have a little bit of painting time just to myself to allow myself that breathing space, if you like, to get really experimental and not feel um, like anyone's watching, if you know what I mean. Because even when it's just the camera, it sometimes feels like there's somebody watching, which most of the time is fine. But what I've noticed about, because I do it regularly now, and also obviously record things for you as well on the YouTube, I really enjoy having these creative spaces just for myself. And yeah, I get really, really quiet and paint away in my little happy place. And I find that when I do that, my artwork goes in a new or unexpected direction, which is really helpful for developing my own art. And then if I develop my own art, and improve it and find out new things as you invariably do as you progress through your making process if you like. Obviously the more you make, the more mistakes you make, the more you learn, the more successes you have and then the more I have to share within the art process videos. So that's just been amazing rather than I think at the beginning of my Patreon journey when it was the beginning of lockdown and I was running it a little bit like my class, but just online. So I've, so I've changed it and adapted it as the time has gone on and listening to feedback and things like that from people in there. So where I was filming every single thing that I created, now I have these gaps and it's really, really good. Anyway, what have I been doing? I have been procrastinating quite a lot of the day and I had a slow start. I didn't come in till about 12 o'clock today, which was for my self-care. So that's completely allowed. And I've been trying to finish these little canvas squares for weeks now, and I just haven't felt like finishing them. Um, and sometimes I get like that when I get to the point where I either need to paint the edges or I need to do the final layers and varnish to seal them or they just need finishing touches. And so I often have paintings that are left 80% done because they're percolating. And that can go on for months and months or even longer. Sometimes I have them years and I still haven't finished. So they become like friends then. So I've been working on the edges and also just putting the finishing touches to each little canvas square. And I've got three which are almost finished. They just need a, a couple of a couple more layers of varnish. But I've got loads to finish. And often I feel like starting new things. So I've been working in my art journal as well. And again, this is just um, a little process I started. And I just was creating on my own. I've not videoed that at all. Some butterflies as well. Don't know if you can see those. Yeah, the light's a bit funny. So I had a little sketching session yesterday, but the heating broke. As quite often in this building, it does. And it's really annoying because even though it's not that cold yet, I really feel the cold and I've got bad circulation and things like that. So my fingers go numb. They literally go um, white and I can't paint and I can't type and I can't do anything. So I have to go home. So it can be a little bit frustrating to not be able to use my room. But anyway, I've brought a little heater in from the van. So if it goes off again, I think, I think it's trying to come on actually today. I'm not cold today, so I think they fixed it, but it's not, it's not hot at all. It's not freezing cold. So it's giving a little bit of heat and it's really mild at the moment. So there's a little bit of weather waffle for you. And but yeah, I just wanted to talk about those times where I think as artists and creators, when we get creative, I think even if it's a situation where you feel like you have to be showing up on social media all the time and that kind of thing, I think it's a case and I think it's really important. And let me know if you agree or not and how it is for you, because I know a lot of you are creators 
out there, not necessarily painters and stuff, but I know you create and you're a very creative bunch. And if you're running social media accounts as well, or maybe you're running a shop, online shop or other things, I've discovered that now I've started to take some creative time just for myself, that it's just an absolute game changer. And it's really helped fix my feeling of being on the edge of burnout where I was a few months ago. And so I think that's my biggest game changer, if you like. And also, you know, not just taking breaks off social media and, you know, filming, in my situation, filming my art process and, and that kind of thing, but also sometimes taking an absolute break. So I'll have these unexpected, unplanned um, days or afternoons off. And yeah, that's been really, really helpful as well, especially because I usually work uh, at least part of the weekends as well. Anyway, those are my little observations for today. My little nuggets of wisdom, if you like, about social media, basically. And I'm still quite new to the YouTube journey as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I go along, really. I'm learning what works. I'm learning what doesn't work and adjusting and adapting as I go along. And I think that's all we can do, isn't it, in life, in general, especially at the moment. I'm definitely on the no plan plan still, but I do have this funny combination with the fact that I like to be organized and I like routine, but then I like to have the option to change um, things on that routine if I want to. So for example, one of my routines is when I come into the studio I like to create first and then do other stuff afterwards so I like to get into my artwork and what I've noticed is if I do it the other way round and maybe start doing some admin or some communication or some editing or maybe having a little meeting with James about plans for the shop and some designs or photography that he's doing for me it takes me off task and I find it really difficult to get back into my right brain, back into the creative side of things. So that's another little thing that I've learned, I think, over the, the past few months. And I need to slow down and I need to listen to my body. And I could stay at home, but I know that if I stay at home, I'm not going to get any creativity done, apart from maybe some sketching in my journals. And I really wanted to move forward because I want to give these to James to photograph and get them in the shop. And as well as I've got quite a few other pieces that I'd like to get finished. And I have other things to do today because I have to record the podcast. But if I'd started with the podcast, I don't think I'd have gone in with the painting. And so that's just me. And that's just the way I am. But I think we all have these kind of things that work best for us, whether we're creatures of routine or whether we're the op opposite, if you like. And I think we all have our power times, don't we, where we are most productive or most creative or those times where it's really useful to actually make a little plan um, and have a little planning sesh with yourself sometimes just on your own and in your calendars and everything. That's what I do anyway. I love that, having a little meeting with yourself. So that's my little tea break now. So I'm going to get on with something else. But it's been really nice chatting. Thanks for having tea with me. A lot of you comment that you've had a hot drink with me and cheers to you if you're having your tea or your coffee or your green juice or whatever it is that you're having. In order to follow my dream of becoming a full-time artist, I've had to find my balance as it does mean a lot of hard work too. This is okay with me because I truly love what I do and feel very fortunate to be doing what I love and therefore following my lifelong dreams. Yes, I've always been an artist, but I've not always been able to practice full time as I've had to support my income in other ways to be able to pay my bills. The other part that is needed, apart from being committed to working consistently, I also need to be creatively productive too. Now, if you're a creator and also make your living from it, you'll probably know what I mean. As in, feeling creative, feeling in the mood, in the zone, whatever you call it. It doesn't happen on tap, does it? I'm smiling to myself as I say this. 
I have found over the past few years that I need quite a few things in place in order to achieve an almost constant creative flow. I need to potter and percolate, time for tea drinking and thinking, quiet time just for me, time to get inspired. I also need to prioritise tasks and schedule. I have to be loosely organised as I have a self-made Patreon schedule and I like to stick to it. I have monthly meetings with myself and my Peter Rabbit calendar. No, I don't use Notion or any apps. I'm just a pen and paper girl with a diary and a calendar. I used to bullet journal, but find that eats my time too much, so I prefer a pre-printed format. I need to work out whether I've got any videos due, any orders to pack, any new designs to finalise in the shop, any almost complete paintings to finish and sell. And I also need time to meet with James as he works closely with me, and we need time to meet as work time and not romantic relationship time. And most importantly, I need painting time. Just as I explained earlier, I need to be experimental without the pressure. Less pressure means less fear. And this brings to mind a quote from a great book that someone mentioned last week in the comments. Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. If you've not read it, I would also recommend it. In that, she says, Your fear will always be triggered by your creativity because creativity asks you to enter into the realms of uncertain outcome and fear hates uncertain outcomes. So I need to apply some discipline and push myself to create, even if I don't feel in the mood. I just like to gently encourage myself to at least do a little something every day. And that usually leads me to having a longer painting session. Finally, I also need to be able to maintain a balance. I know now how important it is to give ourselves permission to take creative breaks and sometimes long ones. They work wonders. Right, I've taken the top off mine now, so... Now it's your turn. Skeleton. Oh yeah, that's so cool. That is cool, isn't it? Mm. Cool. So they put two seeds in for his nose. Clever. Very clever. What a lovely vegetable. Oh, that's pretty freaky. Watch what are you doing? Oh, yeah, that's really good. That's a scary one, that one. <sighs> That'll scare all the monsters away. Why is this nothing? Uh, it's up to you. This one's not very strong, but actually because it's flexible, you get a good curve. So I would suggest you sort of do it in straight lines <clears throat> and then smooth it out afterwards. Because that, that knife's a bit heavier gauge metal. I think it's actually quite a 
actually quite hard. Yeah, you've got to be very careful. So do, do like I say, make sure you cut away less than you want from the first cut. So don't go on to go inside the line, not outside the line. We'll try with that one. Maybe that one, yeah. Is it like a bit flexible, so it's to hold on to it, but... Super scary that is. I'm only up to here. I'm not even finished his eyes yet. <sighs> 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 